Hi there, my name is Ron Rogers, and this presentation is titled My 727 Checkride Stories from the Past. Now, I was always good at taking tests and doing orals. Everybody's good at something, and I tended to be fairly good at, at those two items. Now, I want to tell these stories. I think they're humorous. I think you'll enjoy them. Unfortunately, they come across to me a little bit as bragging, and that's not my intention, so please uh, forgive that. But I think they're funny, and I want to tell them, so uh, here we go. I'll take my chances here. Now, I started out in the Air Force, and I was the guy who they called upon during the Stanovel in the morning uh, program when they had the inspector general from the uh, command come in. I was the guy that got called in 37s. I was the guy that got called in 38s. And and I remember the, the T-38 one uh, specifically. I just devoured that flight manual. They get me up and they're asking a, what was really a fairly easy question of what is the uh, flap extension speed on the T-38? And I go, sir, it's 30 to 45 seconds. And, and you're probably wondering why the range. Well, that has to be, uh, has to do with the fact that the uh, flat motors and the generators are all AC and they have five cycles of shift where they go from 380 cycles to 420 cycles. And it depends on where in the shift range, whether it's low frequency or high frequency, that determines how long it takes for the flaps to extend. Well, um, the flight commander afterwards says, you know, we weren't trying to send in a ringer here. The, uh, the Stanovel guys kind of chuckled over that, but, uh, uh, that's kind of how it started out. Now I really liked the 727. That was probably one of my most favorite aircraft that and the triple seven. Of course, I have my biplane, November 727 KR, my wife's initials, Chris Rogers. But the 27, I probably knew that aircraft better than just about any aircraft. I went through the school. I, I flew all three seats, and I ended up going through the school four times. Now, before you go into the uh, motion simulator, and okay, I'm, I'm not this old. It's almost as bad. They would put us in these boxes mounted to the floor with very antiquated systems. Things are a lot better now. They have uh, very nice simulators. But back in the olden days, things were much more crude, and the aircraft were fairly complicated, and they required some pretty good knowledge of the systems, and especially this panel, it could get you into a lot of trouble if you if you didn't know what you were doing. Now, I was a new hire, 727 second officer. Of course, you're on probation for that first year. And if you screw things up, boy, you can be out of there. So, you know, I took it very seriously. I studied very hard and uh, I really knew, I really knew my manual. So I'm getting my very first check ride. Uh, and they bring you in and they have these little paper trainers and they ask you questions. And I'm getting my check right as a second officer on the panel there, the flight engineer. And we had, we had two individuals who, uh, they were, they were great carriers. We had a lot of really great instructors, gentlemen who just knew this aircraft back and forward. And I was getting my check right. And if you guys know, um, you know, United Airlines in this time in the uh, late 70s to early 80s, uh, we had this this one gentleman. He he was a character. He was kind of small and wiry and and just just a great sense of humor. And there was another gentleman. It was an older gentleman, a black gentleman who walked around with a cane. And he was the hammer. He could be extremely tough on orals, and they, and they tended to be lengthy orals. So. Uh, I'm sitting down there with him and the, uh, the, the older wiry guy goes by, uh, and we had, you know, we had talked before he'd been one of my instructors and he looks at me and he looks at the, uh, the examiner there and he says, oh, you got a tough one here. And I kind of smiled, you know, I mean, what am I going to say? I'm on probation, you know, and, and I did know the guy's reputation and he kind of laughs and he walks away. Well, we start in on, and the philosophy on taking a check ride is, well, you don't answer too quickly. You don't tell them anything more than you really have to. You might dig yourself a hole. Uh, you kind of do it real slowly. So you, you know, you give the answer. And so you kind of space it out. So when the two hours done, maybe he doesn't have enough time to ask any 
as many questions as he might have liked to ask because you, you just kind of drag it out. Well, that wasn't my style. I know the answer to the question, so I answered him. And he went there and he started and he said, well, what does this do? So I told him, and what's this do? And we go here and we go various places in the panel and I'm answering just, he asked the questions, I answer it right away. And he's kind of looking at me and it's going pretty well. And he goes to the front panel and says, okay, all you got is battery power. What, what works? So I take my little finger and I point, this works, this doesn't, this works, this doesn't work here, this doesn't work here, this works, you got these engine instruments, you don't have this one, you put the flap down, you don't have the indicator, you don't have the asymmetrical flap protection because you don't have AC power to the gauge, you put the gear down, and this is the advanced uh, 727, you put the gear down, the three red unlock lights come on, when they go off, the gear is down. And just then the, the wiry gentleman walks by, uh, this was 15 minutes into the oral, and this guy was known for giving two-hour orals, but this is 15 minutes in, and the guy says, oral's over. And I'm thinking for a second, well, is this good or bad? It couldn't be bad, because I thought I answered the question, but the shock on the older gentleman's face was like, oh my God, you failed. And they look at each other, and the, and the older black gentleman laughs and says, no, he didn't fail. And the other guy says, a 15 minute oral. And the older black gentleman says, yep, didn't take that long to find out. He really knew what he knew. And that was the end of that oral. So that, that made me feel, feel pretty good. Uh, interesting enough, later, uh, in my first year of probation, we had to take a, uh, our final kind of oral on the aircraft we were on with a flight manager. And there were three of us in that oral. And I'm the only one who ended up having a career with United out of it, but it's not quite what you think. The, the one individual, uh, Al, uh, we were furloughed for four and a half years. He took a job at US Air and uh, he said, Hey, why don't you come on over? You know, they're hiring. I said, no, no, no. I, you know, I'm, I'm fine here. Well, I, uh, I was in my furlough and Al upgraded to co-pilot and my furlough is just ending. I'm coming back as second officer, and Al's upgrading to captain. So, you know, you never know. But then again, um, I think it was a little bit better to stay at United than to, than to go to U.S. Airways. But there was another gentleman in the class, and this is this is what's kind of tough. And, and this guy, uh, there was a lot of bad stuff going on in his personal life, and he really hadn't studied. And they would ask him a question. And I mean, these are the basic questions you, you need to know. Nothing fancy about it. You know, you just need to know some ground prox warning systems, what will set it off, stuff like that. And he just basically didn't know anything. And well, okay, well, we're, we're trying to answer the questions and, and not embarrass the guy, but you got to answer the questions. We're on probation and, you know, we can't act like we don't know the answers when we do know the answers. So we walk out of there and Al says to me, he says, you know, if he passed that oral, I'm no, never going to sweat another oral in my life. Well, uh, we found out a few days later he didn't pass the oral, but you know, the, the company gave him a chance. Okay. He, he really blew the oral. So they gave him a line check and the line check didn't go well either. So unfortunately that was the end of his career. Now, like I mentioned, I was through, uh, the ground school four times, uh, First of all, as a, as a flight engineer, then when I got recalled uh, to go again as a flight engineer, then I went through the whole school as a co-pilot, then I went through the school as a captain. So I've been through it a lot, I, I you know, the school, and, and I just knew this aircraft backwards and forwards. Well, I'm coming up for a captain line check, and I, uh, I bid so that um, my, my wife's folks were having a 50th anniversary cruise and I needed a week off for that. So I, I bid a schedule that gave me a nice block of time uh, so I could go on that cruise. Well, okay, I get my schedule and then a couple of days later they put my uh, proficiency check right in the middle of that, my, uh, my check right in the simulator and I go, oh no. So I go to my chief pilot and, and we had a very good relationship. I was doing a lot of uh, ALPA work um, and, and we knew each other cause he was helping me with trip drops and stuff like that. And I said, Hey, can you, can you do anything for me here? Um, you know, I got this cruise and that, and he says, let me see what I can do. So calls me up next day and says, good news and bad news. He says, the good news is I got the, uh, the check ride, um, taken out of that spot. The bad news is, can you take it in two days? And I go, well, sure. Um, you know, I haven't really prepared for it cause it was going to be kind of off in the distance, you know, but eh, I know my stuff. I'm good. 
So we go in there, we sit down, I'm there with my co-pilot and we're sitting in the briefing room waiting for the instructor. And I'm joking. I said, uh, I said, I haven't, uh, really prepared for this. Uh, I haven't, haven't done any study. And he looks at me and says, well, I'm not going to bust because of you. And I said, don't worry, you're not going to bust. So we get in there, the instructor starts asking us a few questions. And I said, well, why don't you ask us something hard? And <laughs> my co-pilot kind of sat back up in the seat with his look like what? And he goes, yeah. I say to him, why don't you ask us something hard? And he goes, well, what's hard? And I go, okay, what, uh, what lights on that front instrument panel there are 12 volt? And he goes, geez, I don't know. So I point him out and he says, what lights are six volts? I don't know that either. So I point him out. I said, what levels of PA volume are? And, and I use this a lot because this is a certification thing. There are three levels of PA volume. There's a level one where you're setting at the gate. There's a second increased volume when you get engine oil pressure because they figure you're starting engines it's going to get noisy you need more pa volume and then the third one is when the altitude warning horn goes off because the airplane's uh, most likely depressurized from an event and you need all the pa volume you could get so i do that and he and the instructor goes that's it go wait a minute who's giving the oral here <laughs> and then we kind of laughed and he asked me a couple more questions said okay oral's over it was about a 15 minute oral again and i turned the copilot and i said see you didn't bust well, here's the training center now. Uh, that building right straight ahead, that's D building, I guess, didn't exist when I was going through. In fact, I didn't recognize the place. It had changed so much. And uh, my son's out there for his uh, 787 check ride. And uh, I'm sitting in on my, sevens, uh, my son's um, 787 check ride. So I get to see all the new bells and whistles, the nice improved things. And... Uh, um, they still have the paper panels there that they ask questions, but the tech ride seemed to have gotten a little bit easier. But anyway, that's my story. Um, I hope it wasn't too self-aggrandizing. I, I, I think they're funny stories and I think people will like them. So please don't uh, fault me for that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.